My name is Tay Whiteside, and I'm a metal and woodworker here in my hometown of Roanoke, Virginia. And with the help of my friends Riley Murtaugh and Walker Hooper, we're going to take you with us as we overhaul a 1920s machine shop and bring it back to life as a functional fabrication space. Hey everybody, welcome back to day two. This is my friend Wyatt, say hello Wyatt. Hey Wyatt. Wyatt builds guitars, works uh, at a uh, uh, real estate photography company, has used, worked in the oil field before and mm -hmm. among of other things. And many, many. The main attribute of yours that's crucial to today is that I was able to talk you into coming down here. Huh, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> and helping me for this. <laughs> Um, but uh, we are going to tackle the mezzanine. So yesterday I yeah. emptied most of everything out from underneath it. There's a few more things. There's one big machine back there that we need yeah. to get to. Um, uh, and there are some interesting challenges with this mezzanine, mainly is that it's hanging from the I-beams, mm -hmm. not supported by columns like a deck. So we'll need to figure out how to deal with these little brackets. We use the forklift to support things so it doesn't all come crashing down at once. But that's basically the plan. So uh, let's just start moving stuff. Start moving stuff. <laughs> Seventeen foot long I beams. I look at things a little different and I look at things usually in can we make something out of it? Things like little pieces like this, I got plenty of that scrap, but like threaded rod, like this kind of stuff. I'm gonna get a bucket. And uh, one of the ideas I have when we get up and running is to make little pieces of art, like uh, lamps and maybe sculptures out of all these bolts and threaded rods and things like that. So um, yeah, I'm keeping this kind of stuff for now. But if it looks cool, literally that's my criteria. If it looks cool, just throw it in this bucket. Move this here for a second, clean that. Okay, then let's move it back over here. Clean that. Here's a question, should we pull them out and just dump them on the ground real quick to empty them while we're making a mess or should we just worry about that later? We'll worry about that later. All right, let me find a place to put them that doesn't suck. Spins were, well, as you see, they were all along the wall here, but the um, it's hardware. So every shop should have a place where they can store hardware. And if you buy nuts or bolts or things for a, a project and you don't use all of them, you need to have a place to put it all for later use. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. Rivets, uh, Allen hardware, um, a bunch of this square headed lag stuff. I mean, this sort of fastener really dates this whole shop. You know, square heads, there's a date attached to every feature on this fastener that I'm not keen to, but that thread pattern and that head is at least 50, 60 years old before this was out, probably more. I mean, this is what they built cabins, buildings out of in the 1800s. So maybe add a zero to that. <clears throat> but anyway, point is it's old and I'm dumb and I don't know facts. So, uh, <laughs> It's, let's go ahead and admit it. This yeah. One, yeah, let's just get, yeah. let's get the YouTube comments address right now. I don't I know, know anything. Old. I know how to build stuff and I was terrible at history. So, yeah. Historically, that thing is old. Yeah, Got it's, it. it's exactly old. Old. <laughs> oh, No one got shocked, no one got hurt. 
Uh, we did it. Don't try this at home. Everybody likes a little demo. Classic roll top, roll top desk. It still works. It's actually in really good shape. So this I might take down to Black Dog and see if uh, it's got some value there. It's certainly, certainly still a usable, fully functioning piece of furniture, and it looks like it's all oak oak uh, veneer at least here but this looks like solid oak so it's a nice piece yeah look at that quarter yeah. sawn oak man oh cool a fishing uh scale portable fishing scale that's cool that be a yeah well this is usable for all kinds of things we get it, you need attention. What on earth is that? You may not want the answer to that. That's a, oh, that's a little tweet, 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 tweet. A little grabulator. A little grabulator. <laughs> it's a grabulator. <laughs> Here, have yourself a good old grabulator. Do some grabulating. Me, me, me. This channel is doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, why in the world do these, the joint of bone and joint surgery, there's a ton of them. Aren't they 1958, great? 1958, 56. There's what some. machine shop needs joint and bone surgery? There is some gruesome stuff in here. Well, it's funny you say that because they used to make, um, they used to make pins and plates uh, for crazy uh, leg bone fractures. Here? Yeah. Well, so I found some interesting correspondence between the machinist and the steel factory. Yeah. Trying to find the right alloy of steel that wouldn't like no. rust inside the leg and everything. Yeah. I would love to find something to make a lamp or a, or a piece of art or maybe what I thought about doing was I have a bunch of these old price sheets somewhere, but like make a frame by welding these together that I could frame yeah. some of these with the, the, the parts themselves. Cause this is, I'm assuming this is all weldable, but I don't know. I have no idea what alloy this is, but try it. anyway, so, um, so cool. they, they worked between, uh, a, basically the ma machinist had to know to a degree what was involved in surgery like this. So hmm. it kind of had to have a lot of crossover and knowledge between the the doctor and the machinist and the steel alloy expert to come up with an effective solution to uh, bone fractures. But like, yeah, we're talking 1956. We're talking way before computers were ever involved. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay, you are officially decommissioned. It looks like this air compressor, which is so cool. This old Westinghouse motor. They're really inefficient, but just incredibly quiet. Super old and just, just gorgeous. Oh my gosh, this is great. Um, uh, a V pump here. But anyway, this has got air moving into this whole section and they've got it rigged up to where you can run air along the entire shop. So, it's lovely. I'm so happy that they've got a union right here. That way we can undo the union, undo the electric, which is already shut off. Thank you, Tag. Um, and uh, we should be able to get this thing right on out.
So this is a horizontal milling machine. Some call it a universal milling machine uh, or gear cutting machine, any of that. This is made by a company called LeBlond. Um, I don't know how old it is, but I know that it was originally made to be line driven because it's got this stepped cone pulley back here that actually drives the mechanism. And what someone had, has done probably in the 1940s, based on the age of this uh, motor, somewhere between the 20s and 40s, they retrofitted an, a standalone electric motor on top of it so it could be just plugged into the wall and not have to derive its power mechanically from the ceiling. So what it does primarily, uh, people use these to cut gears, to act, literally make gears from scratch. And so this cutter head here, will have this profile represents the profile of each tooth in yeah. a gear. And so this piece here is called the dividing head. And this disc with all the holes in it is essentially an early form of programming. You would use various pattern, concentric patterns of holes on this ring to program a 20 tooth gear or a 15 tooth gear or a 30 tooth gear. And you'd cut your tooth, you'd turn this a specific number of rotations or part of one rotation and then you'd cut another tooth and you could you could uh, put an infinite number of cutters on here you could this piece actually here has been handmade by somebody here for some specific purpose I'm sure but uh, Brett Davis actually the guy that bought the Bullard his shop in uh, Columbia Pennsylvania he still actively uses a horizontal mill yeah. like this and he sent me a video of it the other day which we'll put here Let's pull it out of the hole. Uh, long term, I want to clean it up and list it, find a home for it. Yeah. But for now, let's get it out of harm's way. The conduit for all the lighting is very much still attached to the mezzanine. So why? That's the box, right, that feeds basically the rest of it. I'll shut the power off and then uh, you're ready to pull the conduit, then we can start ripping. There you go. Maximum safety achieved. I guess there's certain things you get kind of numb to in life. And I guess one of the things I'm used to is destruction via heavy equipment. <laughs>
Well, as you can see, we've achieved something very drastic here today. Yeah. Uh, I had, I mean, this building just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And that's not to say it's not increasing in physical size, but the more Space. of this type of stuff we oh, do. Oh, man. This was a, this absolutely needed to happen. This thing was dangerous. You can really start to yeah. see the condition of the wood here. It was real rotten. Um, and I think uh, that was a good system we came up with. It was a great with. system. So, uh, hey, you got all 10 fingers and toes? I'm good. You do? Yeah. I do too. So we'll do some things. We'll tidy up the electrics. We'll make sure everything's capped off and, and turned off and terminated. Um, really just need to cut this into smaller pieces and, and get it out, get it into a dump trailer and take yep. it to the dump. So let's go home. I'm tired. Sounds good. <laughs> Next time on The Machine Shop, we bring you up to speed on what the shop looks like so far, what machines still need to be moved out, and we announce a new series where we meet other makers from the area and get their story. Well, that, it's just like, Seems this to me small. is the, the blown up version of playing with like Legos. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there's that moment where you, where you run your Lego car off the stairs and it hits the bottom and goes, Poosh. Oh, this oh. is the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only bigger and uh, I still with bigger it. risks involved. Yeah. That's the wrong stance for those. <laughs> yeah. Yes, how can, I, how can I help you? Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate you that. Like that's, it. My, that's my thing. You know, know how to use that? I, like I think I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's my thing. This is what I sleep with at night. Because <laughs> I like to go. This show's going downhill fast. <laughs> <laughs>